The Bedouin or Bedou, Arabic, Bado Badaw, singular Arabic, Badawi Badawi, are a grouping of nomadic Arab people who have historically inhabited the desert regions in North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, Iraq, and the Levant. The English word Bedouin comes from the Arabic Badawi, which means desert dweller, and is traditionally contrasted with Hadir, the term for sedentary people Arabic, Hadar Hadar. Bedouin territory stretches from the vast deserts of North Africa to the rocky sands of the Middle East. They are traditionally divided into tribes, or clans known in Arabic as Ir, a share and share a common culture of herding camels and goats. The vast majority of Bedouin adhere to Islam. Bedouin have been referred to by various names throughout history, including Kedarites in the Old Testament and Arabah by the Assyrians, Arba Aa being a nisbah of the noun Arab, a name still used for Bedouin today. They are referred to as the Arab Arab in the Quran. While many Bedouin have abandoned their nomadic and tribal traditions for a modern urban lifestyle, many retain traditional Bedouin culture such as retaining the traditional Ir clan structure, traditional music, poetry, dances such as sass, and many other cultural practices and concepts. Urbanized Bedouin often organize cultural festivals, usually held several times a year, in which they gather with other Bedouin to partake in and learn about various Bedouin traditions, from poetry recitation and traditional sword dances to playing traditional instruments and even classes teaching traditional tent knitting. Traditions like camel riding and camping in the deserts are still popular leisure activities for urbanized Bedouin who live within close proximity to deserts or other wilderness areas. Etymology The term, Bedouin, derives from the singular form of the Arabic word Bedou, Biedo which literally means, Badia dwellers, in Arabic. The word Badia badit means visible land, in the sense of, plain, or, desert. The term, Bedouin, therefore means, those in Badia, or, those in the desert. In English usage, however, the form Bedouin is commonly used for the singular term, the plural being Bedouin, as indicated by the Oxford English Dictionary, 2nd edition. The term Bedouin also uses the same root word as the Arabic noun for the beginning, bedate, bedaya. Most Arabs believe the Bedouin to be the predecessors to settled Arabs, including the Nabataeans Arabs of the more westerly Levant region. According to a hadith, Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab said of the Bedouin, T hey are the origin of the Arabs and the substance of Islam, and the word for the ethnicity itself may be influenced by that. <laughs> <laughs> Society A widely quoted Bedouin apothem is I am against my brother, my brother and I are against my cousin, my cousin and I are against the stranger." Sometimes quoted as, I and my brother are against my cousin, I and my cousin are against the stranger. This saying signifies a hierarchy of loyalties based on the proximity of male kinship, beginning with the nuclear family through the lineage and then the paternal tribe, and, in principle at least, to an entire genetic or linguistic group which is perceived to akin to kinship in the Middle East and North Africa generally. Disputes are settled, interests are pursued, and justice and order are dispensed and maintained by means of this framework, organized according to an ethic of self-help and collective responsibility Anderson 14. The individual family unit known as a tent or geo bait typically consisted traditionally of three or four adults a married couple plus siblings or parents and any number of children. When resources were plentiful, several tents would travel together as a gome. While these groups were sometimes linked by patriarchal lineage, others were just as likely linked by marriage alliances new wives were especially likely to have close male relatives join them. Sometimes, the association was based on acquaintance and familiarity, or even no clearly defined relation except for simple shared membership within a tribe. The next scale of interaction within groups was the Ibn Amm, cousin, or literally, son of an uncle, or descent group, commonly of three to five generations. These were often linked to gums, but where a gome would generally consist of people all with the same herd type, descent groups were frequently split up over several economic activities, thus allowing a degree of risk management. Should one group of members of a descent group suffer economically, the other members of the descent group would be able to support them. Whilst the phrase, 
descent group suggests purely a lineage-based arrangement. In reality, these groups were fluid and adapted their genealogies to take in new members. The largest scale of tribal interactions is the tribe as a whole, led by a sheikh (Arabic: sheikh sai, literally "old man"), though the title refers to leaders in varying contexts. The tribe often claims descent from one common ancestor, as mentioned above. The tribal level is the level that mediated between the Bedouin and the outside governments and organizations. Distinct structure of the Bedouin society leads to long lasting rivalries between different clans. Bedouin traditionally had strong honor codes, and traditional systems of justice dispensation in Bedouin society typically revolved around such codes. The bisha'a, or ordeal by fire, is a well known Bedouin practice of lie detection. See also, Honor Codes of the Bedouin, Bedouin Systems of Justice. Urbanized Bedouin are less likely to continue such traditions, instead opting for the codes of behavior that govern the wider settled community to which they belong. <laughs> traditions <laughs> Herding. Livestock and herding, principally of goats and dromedary camels comprise the traditional livelihoods of Bedouin. These two animals were used for meat, dairy products, and wool. Most of the staple foods that made up the Bedouin diet were dairy products. Camels, in particular, had numerous cultural and functional uses. Having been regarded as a gift from God, they were the main food source and method of transportation for many Bedouin. In addition to their extraordinary milking potentials under harsh desert conditions, their meat was occasionally consumed by Bedouin. As a cultural tradition, camel races were organized during celebratory occasions, such as weddings or religious festivals. Oral poetry Oral poetry was the most popular art form among Bedouin. Having a poet in one's tribe was highly regarded in society. In addition to serving as a form of art, poetry was used as a means of conveying information and social control. <laughs> Raiding or gauze The well-regulated traditional habit of Bedouin tribes of raiding other tribes, caravans, or settlements is known in Arabic as gauze. History <inaudible> Early history Historically, the Bedouin engaged in nomadic herding, agriculture and sometimes fishing. A major source of income was the taxation of caravans, and tributes collected from non-Bedouin settlements. They also earned income by transporting goods and people in caravans across the desert. Scarcity of water and of permanent pastoral land required them to move constantly. The Moroccan traveler, Ibn Battuta, reported that in 1326 on the route to Gaza, the Egyptian authorities had a customs post at Katya on the north coast of Sinai. Here Bedouin were being used to guard the road and track down those trying to cross the border without permission. The early medieval grammarians and scholars seeking to develop a system of standardizing the contemporary classical Arabic for maximal intelligibility across the Arabophone areas, believed that the Bedouin spoke the purest, most conservative variety of the language. To solve irregularities of pronunciation, the Bedouin were asked to recite certain poems, whereafter consensus was relied on to decide the pronunciation and spelling of a given word. Ottoman period A plunder and massacre of the Hajj caravan by Bedouin tribesmen occurred in 1757, led by Kadan al Fais of the Bani Saqr tribe. An estimated 20,000 pilgrims were either killed in the raid or died of hunger or thirst as a result. Although Bedouin raids on Hajj caravans were fairly common, the 1757 raid represented the peak of such attacks. Under the Tanzimat reforms in 1858, a new Ottoman land law was issued, which offered legal grounds for the displacement of the Bedouin. As the Ottoman Empire gradually lost power, this law instituted an unprecedented land registration process that was also meant to boost the empire's tax base. 
Few Bedouin opted to register their lands with the Ottoman Tapu, due to lack of enforcement by the Ottomans, illiteracy, refusal to pay taxes and lack of relevance of written documentation of ownership to the Bedouin way of life at that time. At the end of the 19th century Sultan Abdul Hamid II settled Muslim populations Circassians from the Balkan and Caucasus among areas predominantly populated by the nomads in the regions of modern Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Palestine, and also created several permanent Bedouin settlements. Although the majority of them did not remain, Ottoman authorities also initiated private acquisition of large plots of state land offered by the Sultan to the absentee landowners Effendis. Numerous tenants were brought in order to cultivate the newly acquired lands. Often it came at the expense of the Bedouin lands. In the late 19th century, many Bedouin began transition to a semi-nomadic lifestyle. One of the factors was the influence of the Ottoman Empire authorities who started a forced sedentarization of the Bedouin living on its territory. The Ottoman authorities viewed the Bedouin as a threat to the state's control and worked hard on establishing law and order in the Negev. During World War I, the Negev Bedouin fought with the Turks against the British, but later, under T. E. Lawrence's assist, the Bedouin switched side and fought the Turks. Hamid Pasha al-Sufi died 1923, sheikh of the Naimat sub-tribe of the Taraban, led a force of 1,500 men who joined the Turkish offensive against the Suez Canal. In Orientalist historiography, the Negev Bedouin have been described as remaining largely unaffected by changes in the outside world until recently. Their society was often considered a world without time. Recent scholars have challenged the notion of the Bedouin as fossilized, or stagnant reflections of an unchanging desert culture. Emmanuel Marx has shown that Bedouin were engaged in a constantly dynamic reciprocal relation with urban centers. Bedouin scholar Michael Meeker explains that the city was to be found in their midst. In the 20th century In the 1950s and 1960s large numbers of Bedouin throughout Midwest Asia started to leave the traditional, nomadic life to settle in the cities of Midwest Asia, especially as hot ranges have shrunk and populations have grown. For example, in Syria, the Bedouin way of life effectively ended during a severe drought from 1958 to 1961, which forced many Bedouin to abandon herding for standard jobs. Similarly, governmental policies in Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Tunisia, oil-producing Arab states of the Persian Gulf and Libya, as well as a desire for improved standards of living, effectively led most Bedouin to become settled citizens of various nations, rather than stateless nomadic herders. Governmental policies pressing the Bedouin have in some cases been executed in an attempt to provide service schools, health care, law enforcement and so on, See Chatty 1986 for examples, but in others have been based on the desire to seize land traditionally roved and controlled by the Bedouin. In recent years, some Bedouin have adopted the pastime of raising and breeding white doves, while others have rejuvenated the traditional practice of falconry. In different countries Arabian Peninsula <inaudible> Saudi Arabia The Arabian Peninsula is the original home of the Bedouin. From here they started to spread out to surrounding deserts, forced out by the lack of water and food. According to tradition, the Saudi Bedouin are descendants of two groups. One group, the Yemenis, settled in the southwestern Arabia, in the mountains of Yemen, and claim they descend from a semi-legendary ancestral figure, Qatan or Joktan. The second group, the Qaisis, settled in north-central Arabia and claimed they were descendants of the biblical Ishmael. A number of additional Bedouin tribes reside in Saudi Arabia. Among them are the, Anaza, Bani Tamim, Jinan, Shamar, Al Mora, Kara, Mara, Harassis, Dawasir, Harb, Gamid, Mutar, Subay, Utaiba, Bani Khalid, Katan, Rashida, Ansar and Yam. In Arabia and the adjacent deserts there are around 100 large tribes of 1,000 members or more. Some tribes number up to 20,000 and a few of the larger tribes may have up to 100,000 members. Inside Saudi Arabia the Bedouin remained the majority of the population during the first half of the 20th century. However, due to change of lifestyle their number has decreased dramatically. 
According to Ali al Naimi, the Bedouin, or Bedou, would travel in family and tribal groups, across the Arabian Peninsula in groups of 50 to 100. A clan was composed of a number of families, while a number of clans formed a tribe. Tribes would have areas reserved for their livestock called duras, which included wells for their exclusive use. They lived in black goat hair tents called Beit al Shar, divided by cloth curtains into rug floor areas for males, family, and cooking. In Hafuf, they bartered their sheep, goats and camels, including milk and wool, for grain and other staples. al Naimi also quotes Paul Harrison's observation of the Bedouin, there seems to be no limit at all to their endurance. <laughs> Levant <laughs> Syria Although the Arabian Desert was the homeland of the Bedouin, some groups have migrated to the north. It was one of the first lands inhabited by the Bedouin outside the Arabian Desert. Today there are over a million Bedouin living in Syria, making a living herding sheep and goats. The largest Bedouin clan in Syria is called Ruwala who are part of the Aniza tribe. Another famous branch of the Aniza tribe is the two distinct groups of Hassana and Sabah who largely arrived from the Arabian Peninsula in the 18th century. Herding among the Bedouin was common until the late 1950s, when it effectively ended during a severe drought from 1958 to 1961. Due to the drought, many Bedouin were forced to give up herding for standard jobs. Another factor was the formal annulling of the Bedouin tribe's legal status in Syrian law in 1958, along with attempts of the ruling Ba'ath Party regime to wipe out tribalism. Preferences for customary law in contrast to state law have been informally acknowledged and tolerated by the state in order to avoid having its authority tested in the tribal territories. In 1982 the Al-Assad family turned to the Bedouin tribe leaders for assistance during the Muslim Brotherhood uprising against Al-Assad government see 1982 Hama massacre. The Bedouin sheikh's decision to support Hafez Al-Assad led to a change in attitude on the part of the government that permitted the Bedouin leadership to manage and transform critical state development efforts supporting their own status, customs and leadership. As a result of the Syrian civil war some Bedouin became refugees and found shelter in Jordan, Turkey, Lebanon, and other states. <inaudible> Israel and Palestine Prior to the 1948 Israeli Declaration of Independence, an estimated 65,000 to 90,000 Bedouin lived in the Negev Desert. According to Encyclopedia Judaica, 15,000 Bedouin remained in the Negev after 1948. Other sources put the number as low as 11,000. Another source states that in 1999, 110,000 Bedouin lived in the Negev, 50,000 in the Galilee, and 10,000 in the central region of Israel. All of the Bedouin residing in Israel were granted Israeli citizenship in 1954. The Bedouin who remained in the Negev belonged to the Tiaha Confederation as well as some smaller groups such as the Azazmi and the Jahalan. After 1948, some Negev Bedouin were displaced. The Jahalan tribe, for instance, lived in the Tel Arad region of the Negev prior to the 1950s. In the early 1950s, the Jahalan were among the tribes that, according to Emmanuel Marx, moved or were removed by the military government. They ended up in the so-called E1 area east of Jerusalem. About 1,600 Bedouin serve as volunteers in the Israel Defense Forces, many as trackers in the IDF's elite tracking units. Famously, Bedouin shepherds were the first to discover the Dead Sea Scrolls, a collection of Jewish texts from antiquity, in the Judean Caves of Qumran in 1946. Of great religious, cultural, historical and linguistic significance, 972 texts were found over the following decade, many of which were discovered by Bedouin. Successive Israeli administrations tried to demolish Bedouin villages in the Negev. Between 1967 and 1989, Israel built seven legal townships in the northeast of the Negev, with Tel as Sabi or Tel Shiva I. The largest, city of Rahat, has a population of over 58,700 as of December 2013, as such it is the largest Bedouin settlement in the world. Another well-known township out of the seven of them that the Israeli government built, is Hura. According to the Israel Land Administration 2007, some 60% of the Negev Bedouin live in urban areas. 
The rest live in so-called unrecognized villages, which are not officially recognized by the state due to general planning issues and other political reasons. They were built chaotically without taking into consideration local infrastructure. These communities are scattered all over the northern Negev and often are situated in inappropriate places, such as military fire zones, natural reserves, landfills, etc. On 29 September 2003, Israeli government adapted a new Abu Basma Plan Resolution 881, according to which a new regional council was formed, unifying a number of unrecognized Bedouin settlements Abu Basma Regional Council. This resolution also regarded the need to establish seven new Bedouin settlements in the Negev, literally meaning the official recognition of unrecognized settlements, providing them with a municipal status and consequently with all the basic services and infrastructure. The council was established by the Interior Ministry on 28 January 2004. Israel is currently building or enlarging some 13 towns and cities in the Negev. According to the general planning, all of them will be fully equipped with the relevant infrastructure, schools, medical clinics, postal offices, etc. and they also will have electricity, running water and waste control. Several new industrial zones meant to fight unemployment are planned, some are already being constructed, like Aydin Haingev in the suburbs of Rahat. It will have a hospital and a new campus inside. The Bedouin of Israel receive free education and medical services from the state. They are allotted child cash benefits, which has contributed to the high birth rate among the Bedouin, 5% growth per year. But unemployment rate remains very high, and few obtain a high school degree, 4%, and even fewer graduate from university, 0.6%. In September 2011, the Israeli government approved a 5-year economic development plan called the Prower Plan. One of its implications is a relocation of some 30.000 to 40.000 Negev Bedouin from areas not recognized by the government to government approved townships. In a 2012 resolution the European Parliament called for the withdrawal of the Prower Plan and respect for the rights of the Bedouin people. In September 2014, Yer Shamir, who heads the Israeli government's Ministerial Committee on Bedouin Resettlement Arrangements, stated that the government was examining ways to lower the birthrate of the Bedouin community in order to improve its standard of living. Shamir claimed that without intervention, the Bedouin population could exceed half a million by 2035. Jordan. Most of the Bedouin tribes migrated from the Arabian Peninsula to what is Jordan today between the 14th and 18th centuries. Today Bedouin make up from 33% to 40% of the population of Jordan. Often they are referred to as a backbone of the kingdom, since Bedouin clans traditionally support the monarchy. Most of Jordan's Bedouin live in the vast wasteland that extends east from the desert highway. The eastern Bedouin are camel breeders and herders, while the western Bedouin herd sheep and goats. Some Bedouin in Jordan are semi-nomads, they adopt a nomadic existence during part of the year but return to their lands and homes in time to practice agriculture. The largest nomadic groups of Jordan are the Banu Bani Laith, they reside in Petra, Banasakar and Banu al huwaitat they reside in Wadi Rum. There are numerous lesser groups, such as the Al-Saran, Banu Khalid, Hawazim, Asia, and Sharafat. The Ruwala tribe, which is not indigenous, passes through Jordan in its yearly wandering from Syria to Saudi Arabia. The Jordanian government provides the Bedouin with different services such as education, housing, and health clinics. However, some Bedouin give it up and prefer their traditional nomadic lifestyle. In the recent years, there is a growing discontent of the Bedouin with the ruling monarch, but the king manages to deal with it. In August 2007, police clashed with some 200 Bedouin who were blocking the main highway between Amman and the port of Aqaba. Livestock herders, they were protesting the government's lack of support in the face of the steeply rising cost of animal feed, and expressed resentment about government assistance to refugees. Arab Spring events in 2011 led to demonstrations in Jordan, and Bedouin took part in them. But it is unlikely that the Hashemites are to expect a revolt similar to turbulence in other Arab states. The main reasons for that are the high respect to the monarch, and contradictory interests of different groups of the Jordanian society. The King Abdullah II maintains his distance from the complaints by allowing blame to fall on government ministers, whom he replaces at will. <laughs> North Africa
Topic: <laughs> Maghreb In the 11th century, reigning over Ifriqiya, the Zurids somehow recognized the sovereignty of the Caliph of Cairo. Probably in 1048, the ruler or viceroy Zurid, al-Mu'is, decided to stop this sovereignty. The Fatimids were then powerless to lead a punitive expedition. In the 11th century, the Bedouin tribes of Banu Halal and Banu Sulaym, who originated from Syria and North Arabia respectively, living at the time in a desert between the Nile and the Red Sea, moved westward into the Maghreb areas and were joined by a third Bedouin tribe of Makal, which had its roots in South Arabia. The vizier of the Caliph of Cairo chose to let go of the Maghreb and obtained the agreement of his sovereign. They set off with women, children, camping equipment, some stopping on the way, especially in Cyrenaica, where they are still one of the essential elements of the settlement, but most arrived in Ifriqiya by the Gabes region. Berber armies were defeated in trying to protect the walls of Kairawan. The Zurids abandoned Kairawan to take refuge on the coast where they survived for a century. Ifriqiya, the Banu Halal and Banu Sulaym spread as on the high plains of Constantine where they gradually choked the Kala of Banu Hamad, as they had done Kairawan few decades ago. From there, they gradually gained the upper Algiers and Oran plains, some were taken to the Muluya Valley and in Dokala plains by the Caliph of Marrakesh in the second half of the 12th century. In the 13th century, they lived in all the Maghreb plains with the exception of the main mountain ranges and some coastal regions that served as refuges for the natives. They gave up their old trade breeder of camels to look after the care of the sheep and oxen. Ibn Khaldun, a Muslim historian, writes, Similar to an army of locusts, they destroy everything in their path. The Bedouin dialects are used in Maghrebi regions of Morocco Atlantic coast, in regions of High Plains and Sahara in Algeria, in regions of Tunisian Sahel, and in regions of Tripolitania. The Bedouin dialects has four major varieties Sulaym dialects, Libya and southern Tunisia. Eastern Halal dialects, Central Tunisia and Eastern Algeria Central Halal dialects, South and Central Algeria, especially in border areas of Sahara Makal dialects, Western Algeria and Morocco In Morocco, Bedouin Arabic dialects are spoken in plains and in recently founded cities such as Casablanca. Thus, the city Arabic dialect shares with the Bedouin dialects Gal to say Qala. They also represent the bulk of modern urban dialects Koines, such as those of Oran and Algiers. Topic: <inaudible> Egypt. Bedouin in Egypt mostly reside in the Sinai Peninsula and in the suburbs of the Egyptian capital of Cairo. The past few decades have been difficult for traditional Bedouin culture due to changing surroundings and the establishment of new resort towns on the Red Sea coast, such as Sharm el Sheikh. Bedouin in Egypt are facing a number of challenges erosion of traditional values, unemployment, and various land issues. With urbanization and new education opportunities, Bedouins started to marry outside their tribe, a practice that once was completely inappropriate. Bedouin living in the Sinai Peninsula did not benefit much from employment in the initial construction boom due to low wages offered. Sudanese and Egyptians' workers were brought here as construction laborers instead. When the tourist industry started to bloom, local Bedouin increasingly moved into new service positions such as cab drivers, tour guides, campgrounds, or cafe managers. However, the competition is very high, and many Sinai Bedouin are unemployed. Since there are not enough employment opportunities, Tarabin Bedouin as well as other Bedouin tribes living along the border between Egypt and Israel are involved in inter-border smuggling of drugs and weapons, as well as infiltration of prostitutes and African labor workers. In most countries in the Middle East the Bedouin have no land rights, only users' privileges, and it is especially true for Egypt. Since the mid-1980s, the Bedouin who held desirable coastal property have lost control of much of their land as it was sold by the Egyptian government to hotel operators. The Egyptian government did not see the land as belonging to Bedouin tribes, but rather as a state property. In the summer of 1999, the latest dispossession of land took place when the army bulldozed Bedouin-run tourist campgrounds north of Nueva as part of the final phase of hotel development in the sector, overseen by the Tourist Development Agency TDA. The director of the Tourist Development Agency dismissed Bedouin rights to most of the land, saying that they had not lived on the coast prior to 1982. 
Their traditional semi nomadic culture has left Bedouin vulnerable to such claims. The Egyptian Revolution of 2011 brought more freedom to the Sinai Bedouin, but since it was deeply involved in weapon smuggling into Gaza after a number of terror attacks on the Egypt Israel border, a new Egyptian government has started a military operation in Sinai in the summer fall of 2012. Egyptian army has demolished over 120 underground tunnels leading from Egypt to Gaza that were used as smuggling channels and gave profit to the Bedouin families on the Egyptian side, as well as the Palestinian clans on the other side of the border. Thus the army has delivered a threatening message to local Bedouin, compelling them to cooperate with state troops and officials. After negotiations the military campaign ended up with a new agreement between the Bedouin and Egyptian authorities. Topic tribes and populations There are a number of Bedouin tribes, but the total population is often difficult to determine, especially as many Bedouin have ceased to lead nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyles. Below is a partial list of Bedouin tribes and their historic place of origin. The Harb tribe is a tribe in Saudi Arabia and Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula. Banu Halal, some tribes of this confederation are Bedouin, they live in western Morocco, central Algeria, southern Tunisia and eastern desert and other steppe of the region. Banu Sulaym, big tribes, the Sulaym in the east Libya and southern Tunisia, present in Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco and Syria. Aniza, some tribes of this confederation are Bedouin, they live in northern Saudi Arabia, western Iraq, the Persian Gulf states, Syrian steppe and in Baqa, Azazmi, Negev Desert and Egypt. Beni Hamida, east of Dead Sea, Jordan. Bani Tamim in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Qatar, Jordan, United Arab Emirates Bahrain and Kuwait. Banu Yam centered in Najran province, Saudi Arabia and Iraq Beni Sakr in Egypt Iraq, Syria and Jordan. Dulaim, a very large and powerful tribe in Al-Anbar, western Iraq, Al-Duwasir, south of Riyadh. Gamid, large tribe from Al-Baha province, Saudi Arabia, mostly settled, but with a small Bedouin section known as Badiat Gamid, Al-Hadid, large Bedouin tribe found in Iraq, Syria and Jordan. Now mostly are settled in cities such as Hadida in Iraq, Homs and Hama in Syria, and Amman in Jordan, al hawatat one of the largest tribes in Jordan al hessa Al-Jaludi al of Al-Harb Goliath's tribe of War Tribe, one of the largest tribes in the Arabian Peninsula, mostly settled in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Palestine, Syria and Iraq. The tribe has deep roots in the Umayyad and Abbasid dynasties. Al Qasane, one of the largest tribes in northern Urbid Jordan and well known for the long history dominating the north. Bani Khalid, one of the Bedouin tribes in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Jordan, Egypt, and Syria. Al Mahali South Jordan Mahalis have long dominated Karak Bedouin society, strongest tribe in Karak, one of the largest political power in Jordan. Al Mawasi, a group living on the central Gaza Strip coast. Makal, found in the Maghreb in which some sub-tribes have a strong presence in Algerian, Moroccan Western Sahara and in Mauritania Muzina tribe in Dahab and South Sinai Egypt. Sharan al a very large tribe residing in the area between Bisha, Kamis Mushite and Abba. al arida is a famous name for Sharan because it has a very large area, in Saudi Arabia. Shamar, a very large and influential tribe in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Jordan. Descended from the ancient tribe of Tayy from Najd. Subay, Central Nejd. Tarabin, one of the largest tribes in Egypt Sinai, and Israel Negev. Tuba Zangarai, Israel near the Jordan River cliff in the eastern Galilee. Al-Wahiba, a large tribe in Oman residing in the Sharkia Sands, also known as the Wahiba Sands. See also Arab etymology Arabians Arda Badawi Arabic Bedouin music Ginawa Kedarites Sedentism Tribes of Arabia Notes <laughs>